have um, everything we need to run an EC2 instance. Um, a VPC, a subnet, security group, internet gateway, etc., etc. So that's all been created in your um, VPC uh, dashboard on AWS. Now we are going to use Ansible to create your EC2 instance. So here I already created the file. Um, and what's in, oh, I need to change my screen sharing. What's uh, important here is that once again, in order for our EC2 instance to work, we need to set it up using information that is dynamic. And it's IDs um, for the VPC, for the subnet, and for the security group. We used to select them in a list, but we cannot do that anymore because we are running everything automated. So first of all, we are going to gather some information about our components so that we can use them uh, when creating the instance. So the instance is going to be in a VPC. So we need to grab the VPC ID because we want things to be quite independent. Uh, we are going to use another uh, Ansible module, which is the EC2 VPC net info for each, almost every, AWS module for Ansible, you have the same with info at the end. And that will basically allow you to gather information about um, your AWS components. So here I'm going to check for a VPC called ACIT4640 Auto, and I'm going to register the output of that module into a variable called VPCs. That will allow me to look for the subnet that I created where I want to host my virtual machine. So I'm going to use EC2 VPC subnet info. And here I'm going to add a couple of filters. Um, I'm going to use the tag, the name that I, I want to filter on, which is AC8046 for the subnet. And you'll remember that we had several subnets with the same name. So in order for us not to confuse things, um, and this is usually what you should work with, IDs rather than names. Here, we're going to add the VPC ID. So the filter syntax is a little bit funny. It looks like the AWS CLI syntax for filtering, which I assume you've seen in, in term three. Um, so it uses dashes instead of underscores. You can find information on the ansible.com website. And then we are going to register all of this into a subnets variable. What's important to Remember is that because you are going to grab a list of components that match your that match your filters, so you may have several elements there. So this will come back as a list. So here you will have a list of VPCs, and you want to look at the first one because you expect the first one to be the one you are looking for. Same for the uh, subnets. Uh, we are going to have several subnets. So you're going to go through the list and take the first one because we expect, expect this to be the right. For the security group, I did the same thing. Security groups are a little bit specific as in the name is actually a group name attribute and not a tag. So I use the group name and the VPC ID. And I'm hoping that this is going to give me the uh, security group that I'm looking for. Um, I have a debug. Um, task here, which is not really necessary when I was working on my playbook. Uh, so this is something you could do when you don't really know what your variables are. You can add a debug task so that you can inspect what your variables are looking at. And then the most important bit, which is going to be the EC2 instance. So this is what is going to create the EC2 instance. This is going to be the name of your instance, which actually is going to be a tag name. Uh, you want to create the instance in that subnet. I'm going to use t2.micro, set the security group based on the information that I gathered before, and use the SSH key called ACAT4640 underscore key. You may have to adjust that if you are using a different key name. And then very important setting, the image ID. So the image ID is the ID of the AMI that matches your Ubuntu 20 
uh, HVM, SSD, whatever. Um, so you can find that on Amazon website, on the AMI marketplace, on the Ubuntu website, or you can just use this. This only works on US West 2. So if you're using a different region, you'll need to adjust your image ID to a different value. And then very important too, you want to assign a public IP to that instance. So just um, for your information, I'm going to show you where you can find uh, Ubuntu AMI locator. So on the Ubuntu website, you have a huge list of AMIs for Ubuntu. So if you're looking for 2004 LTS in US West 2, obviously you're looking at AMD64 because we're not running ARM uh, virtual machines. And this is the AMI ID that you want to use in your playbook. Okay, back here. Um, yeah, and that's the playbook I, I, I have now to create my instance. Uh, what's um, important is that my VPC is already created. Uh, so it's going to work. But if my VPC was not created, I would not have anything back. And then I would have a lot of problems uh, in my playbook. We'll see how we can fix that later. All right, so now we can just, uh, just make sure that my keys are still active and then run the playbook, the AWS EC2 playbook. So first of all, it's going to gather information um, about the VPC, the subnet and the security group. And then it's going to create my instance. So here my instance has been created and I can check on my dashboard that I do have an instance that is created here. It's still in the pending state because it's still booting up. It doesn't have an IP address yet. That takes a bit of time. Now it has. So I'm going to try an SSH to that virtual machine using my key. Now let's uh, share this. Okay. I have my key. Maybe the instance is not up yet. Okay, now it's working. Um, and I can connect. And obviously, as before, I have um, pseudo access and I can do whatever I want on my machine. So this is really interesting for us because now instead of leaking around we can just run ansible playbook and it's going to create an instance um, for us if we don't have the vpc we can just run aws infra and it's going to create our uh, vpc infrastructure for us so that's a very good step 